So hello guys, welcome to a Realm Reborn video. Now I've not done one of these kind of news videos for absolute ages, and they were probably the most popular videos on my channel, but they were probably the videos I enjoyed doing most as well, because not only did I get to make the videos, I got to discuss in comments with you guys on what features you were looking forward to and stuff, and, and this is going to be back at like 2.1, so... Since it's been E3, I thought I would do a video on the news that came out during E3 for A Realm Reborn. I was planning on doing two videos, one on the English live letter and one on the letter from the producer 15, but I just kind of decided I'll just do it in the one. But first, the most important news that came out of E3 is that patch 2.3 is slated for a July 8th release, which is a Tuesday, if I'm correct. I'm pretty sure it's a Tuesday. That's a lot sooner than I thought it was going to be. I've heard people saying they predicted end of this month, but 8th of July sounds relatively soon. Was that two, th three weeks away? So, can't complain with that. But what I'm going to talk about now, I'm not going to go over everything we discussed, but I'll go over the kind of major things that came out of uh, the live letters at E3. And first, in the English letter that they done a few days back, they announced the, a new class and a new job. Now, I originally guessed that it would be Thief that would become a ninja, but I was half right. The new class being introduced will be a rogue, and the new job it will then become will be ninja. Which I suppose kind of fits in with the class, job, armory system, with the classes not really being traditional Final Fantasy jobs, because Thief is like an iconic Final Fantasy job. So... Yeah, so maybe Rogue's probably better. But yeah, Rogue becoming Ninja, maybe in the future. Rogue will become a Thief at some point. Who knows, we already have Arcanist that becomes Scholar or Summoner. Why can't we have a Rogue that becomes Thief Ninja in the future? Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. So, what do I think of it? From what we saw, it looks very similar to Monk, if you ask me. He did say positioning is not going to be as important, like it is with Monk, like... With Monk, you need to do a lot of flank and behind attacks. He said it'll be focused more on using different poisons in your blades, and you will also have increased movement speed and stuff, and you'll take reduced fall damage. I don't know why reduced fall damage is really a thing. There isn't really any battles that, you know, rely on fall damage. Maybe Titan, maybe you get knocked off the edge and you land at the bottom, you don't die and you run about, I don't know. <laughs> but... Yeah, but I suppose, why not, eh? So yeah, Rogue and Ninja looks cool. I'll definitely be trying that out. I'll be levelling that one up because I quite enjoy my melee classes. So yeah, definitely. What do you guys think of Rogue and Ninja? Just let us know in the comments below if you're looking forward to rolling a Rogue. As far as we know, the jobs will be in patch 2.4. So it's still a ways away. You're probably getting closer to the winter before we see the jobs. But so now we're going to shift focus from the from the new job, the new class, and what's going to be in patch 2.3. We already know Ramu is going to be in patch 2.3. We've already heard this, we're going to get Ramu and Ramu Extreme. I think it might be called Ramu Hard, but judging by Leviathan Hard, I don't know if you could really call it a hard mode, because it's not difficult at all. But yeah, we're going to get the story version of Ramu, that's what we'll call it. The story. We're getting the story version of Ramu and Extreme. We got to see the battlefield a little bit. We didn't get to see a lot of the mechanics. I did notice there's water on the ground. So I'm kind of guessing Ramu is going to electrify the water and, you know, electrocute us all. But from what we got from Ramu, there wasn't a lot. We didn't, we, we don't expect much. We got to see what the battlefield looked like. We got to see Ramu himself. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Looking forward to it. I always enjoy new story missions, so... Yeah, Ramu. Now, I want to talk about Frontlines. This is the new PvP content being added. And if I was honest, I didn't care too much for Frontlines. At first, judging by the Wolves' Den. I think I have done three matches in the Wolves' Den. Even before it was released, I, I just wasn't interested. But Frontlines looks cool. I've got to be honest. So... Frontlines has been set up as it's like a large scale three teams competing, if you know what I mean. Now from what we know, 
it's going to be 72 players, so 24 versus 24 versus 24. But the interesting thing is, it can be scaled down. So if there's not a lot of people queuing for front lines, it could be 16 versus 16 versus 16, and can even scale down to 8 versus 8 versus 8. So you, you don't actually have to wait for 72 players if there's not a lot of people queuing. It will scale down the objectives to meet the needs of maybe, you know, 16 players or 8. Which is pretty cool, so at first it's probably going to be quite popular, I'd imagine you're going to get the full 72, but, you know, as time goes by, some people fall away from it. You don't actually have to wait ages to get into a party. What else do we know for front lines? An average match will take about 30 minutes. So it shouldn't take too long. It's They said it would be very easy to get into. It's quite casual. From what it looked like, it looked like, it didn't look like basic, just go in and kill each other, you know. It looked like a kind of capture the flag kind of idea, and you need to hold certain points. And if you capture a flag, you get a set amount of points, and then for each second you hold it, you keep getting more points so it builds up. So other players have got to try and steal your flags and stuff. So it looked like a kind of, you've got, like, controlling certain areas will get you points. Obviously killing other players will get you points, but it seemed more focused on controlling areas. So the more areas controlled, the more points you get, and whoever reaches the maximum points cap wins. Simple as that. It looks quite simple. Uh, it just looks kind of fun, doesn't it? It just looks different from Wolf's Den. The one thing that really surprised me about Frontlines is there is no job restrictions, and you can even change jobs within it, albeit you have to be at an outpost, but you can actually change jobs in Frontlines. So does that mean we could queue up and end up with a full alliance of DPS? No healers? You know, I, it's mental. Like, I didn't, I didn't expect that. I thought they'd have their set, two tanks, two healers, four DPS per party. But no, there's no restriction on jobs. So yeah, queue up with whatever you want and have fun. <laughs> so that means you won't get tank instant queues and stuff, so... Yeah, I think Frontlines is shaping up to be quite cool. They showed you can get a mount from it as well. Yeah, I'm actually quite looking forward to Frontlines. I thought the area looked cool. So, yeah, Frontlines looks, it looks like it's shaping up to be pretty decent. Now, the thing I'm actually looking forward to most in patch 2.3 is Crystal Tower. Now, I was kind of looking forward to Crystal Tower. I do like Crystal Tower. But the new Crystal Tower looks absolutely stunning. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but it's called the Circus Tower. But it's spelt with an S, not circus as in, like, the circus with clowns and stuff. From what we know... The new Crystal Tower will drop item level 100 armour. There will be a weekly lockout like we had on the original Crystal Tower back in 2.1. There won't be many parts of the Crystal Tower where your alliance is split. They said the focus is more on your raid climbing the tower together. So I don't think there's actually any places where your alliance splits into three and does like these separate objectives. We didn't get to see a lot of it, but we got to see some bits. It, it looked stunning. We didn't see any bosses, but I didn't expect that. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what bosses we're going to get in the new Crystal Tower. And just with uh, the first Crystal Tower, there'll be a wee story that unlocks the next part of the Crystal Tower, so you won't automatically get it. You'll have to do, like, generally, you always do a few quests to unlock it. And I just hope it's not do X fate. You know, that was... Ugh. I really wish... They would stop putting fates in content. <coughs> At my farm. But yeah. Fates, they need to stop it because it's getting old. That is the one gripe I really have about this game is fates. Stop it. Now the stuff that I just talked about there were like the main things we got from E3. The job, Crystal Tower and front lines. They did talk about other things. They talked about chocobo raising. Uh, I won't go into it too much. You can basically set like a pen for your free company house and you can do chocobo raising. I was slightly disappointed with chocobo raising. Uh, I was kind of hoping to like breed chocobos from like a young age and helping them grow into full grown chocobos and maybe selling them or keeping them for myself and stuff like that and have multiple chocobos. But no. 
it's for your own your like the companion chocobo you have basically help it level up instead of having to go out and fight you can level it up using chocobo breeding yeah slightly disappointed but it, it did say through this you can break the rank 10 like if just now your chocobo levels up from 1 to rank 10 if you can be bothered and you can actually break rank 10 and start unlocking other abilities from like the different trees I suppose that's kind of cool but that was not what I was looking for in chocobo raising and breeding and stuff so mm, yeah they did say in patch 2.35 you'll be able to change the colour of your chocobo you can dye it so that's kind of cool I suppose but yeah I really want to see chocobo raising being built upon and actually allowing us to like raise chocobos from birth from an egg and help them grow and either selling them or keeping them or you know do what you want with them maybe raise them for racing or mounts battle mounts oh it'd be cool I don't think they can do that but they should they should look into it like you can actually fight on choco back that'd be really cool but yeah that kind of idea is what I was looking for from chocobo raising unfortunately that's not what it is but maybe in the future it can become that disappointed but hopeful housing and personal rooms were touched upon now everyone wants personal housing I want personal housing probably out of my price range but I want personal housing I want my wee cottage you know uh, but no we're getting personal rooms and it will be a like a, a door and our free company house if you don't have a free company house unfortunately you can't get personal rooms or chocobo raising it's part of the free company so, personal rooms, there'll be a little door at the back of your uh, free company house on the first floor and the room is slightly larger than a single level of a small house. So, I suppose that's not bad and you can decorate it the same way as you can decorate your free company house except you can't put like trees and shit in it. You have to, you know, it has to be indoor furnishing. Uh, I'm not sure if other players can come into your uh, personal room. I don't know. Uh, th that'll maybe come out later. Maybe it did and I didn't pick up on it. It's going to cost 300,000 gil to unlock it. And I'm not sure if that's 300,000 gil per player or 300,000 gil between your free company. You know, if like your free company pays 300,000 and it unlocks for everyone. I don't know. If that's the case, if you're in a large free company, you're sorted. You know, a couple of gil each. I'm, I don't know on that one. They just said 300,000 gil to unlock it. I just want my personal housing. That's all I want. But they said before patch 2.4 is when we'll get personal housing. So, from my understanding, they will have to make new wards because they're all full. So, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe they'll have, like personal wards only for for personal only houses who knows but like who can who really can afford a large house themselves some rich guy <laughs> uh, finally the last thing I kind of want to talk about which I was quite I was quite excited is they're having fan events there's a fan event in London on the 25th of October now they've not really told us what is going to be at it They've only they've said there's going to be a teaser website and more information soon, but they did tell us 25th of October fan event in London. I will be doing my best to go, and hope to see some of you guys there. Be kind of cool. So that's all for me. I I don't want to make this video too long. I've tried my best to keep this as short as possible, kind of condensed. I will put links to the official Q and A and anything else I can find online that will, you know, give you a better idea of everything that was in it, because I don't want to go over every single thing, because it, it, I will end up going on for ages. So guys, I will leave, I will leave this one here. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you're looking forward to in patch 2.3 and 2.4 and beyond. Anything you want to discuss, that is what I enjoy most about making these videos, is discussing it with you guys after. So, yeah, leave comments below. Let me know what you're looking forward to. If there's, is there anything that I missed that I maybe shouldn't have? You know, let me know and we'll let everybody, el let everybody else know in the comments below. But guys, thanks for joining me and I'll see you all in another video. Take care.